There aren't even any Countess Ra Ra songs that rhyme with leather shoes. Curse you, Pharaoh! <laughs> I really do like the pants, though. Yes, they do look good on you. Can I get those back? <laughs> no. Can't beat my, can't beat my, can't beat my leather shoes. I got me some leather shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is us being silly. I mean, and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 24, The Main Attraction. Yeah, every time I hear that title, my brain jumps to Fatal Attraction. I have no idea why. It's mostly the title it has nothing to do with the episode, because that episode was pretty good. Way better than last week's episode to me. <laughs> oh my god, Tinky in this episode. <laughs> yeah, she was very fun. Poor girl. And very overworked. I'm just glad she didn't pinky promise anything. <laughs> uh, also, I'm surprised she didn't have an emergency stash of all that stuff the guy was asking for. She had the straw collection. She just didn't have peeled apples. Why would she have peeled apples? Apples are AJ's thing. Uh, also, that guy's a real ass. No offense. None taken. Yeah, Sven Gallup can just go away. Very far away. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That was kind of interesting how we had a bunch of Lady Gaga references, and the actress who plays Countess... I'm just going to go Rara, so... <laughs> just going to say, and the lady who plays Rara has actually been on Broadway and a bunch of other things, so yeah, she's pretty good. Her name's Lena Hall, I believe? L-E-N-A? Yeah, Lena. Though it would have been fun if they could have actually gotten Lady Gaga for this. <laughs> uh... I kind of have trouble imagining that. <laughs> That's pretty since I was like, ooh, it would be neat if we got Lady Gaga. <laughs> because I can't quite imagine it. I can, but then again, I'm not overly familiar with Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of my contact with Lady Gaga comes from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged and their music videos. And the fact that if I bought the Lady Gaga album on Amazon, they gave me free storage for a couple of years. So. And the album was only 99 cents, so... <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot you did that. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has an amazing voice, but it seems like she's calmed down. So yeah, I actually really enjoyed this episode. Not, you know, oh my god, it was a wonderful episode, like lots of my friends were. <laughs> I, I mean, they were having waifu battles over Rara. I'm like, she's nice and everything, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was like, no, she's my waifu. I called her first. Um, you do realize that as a singer, she would be traveling all the time and you guys wouldn't have much time with her, right? <laughs> I'm bringing logic into a shipping situation. I should be taken out and shot. <laughs> with a cannon. No, it's because I'm using a cannon. <laughs> And I suddenly remember that scene from one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Stop shooting holes in my ship! Well, you know, that's the thing. Cannon sinks ships. Because apparently AJ and her are now being shipped now. <laughs> of course, they're friends, so of course I can ship them. J they're just friends, guys. <laughs> like that matters to the shipping community. Of course not. <laughs> The songs were nice, although that one song at the end where she was singing about being herself and really being herself, some of the lyrics felt a little like they kind of stumbled over themselves a little bit. So other than that, the song was really nice. I was getting mild feels from it. It was more complicated lyrics than we normally hear for an MLP song. And considering that I'm a Miranda Lambert fan, I like that. I like songs that are complicated and difficult to sing. <laughs> It stops me from singing, which most people are probably grateful for. And the story was nice. It was a bit predictable because I pretty much saw where it was going the moment she showed up. And a pretty much the moment AJ was like, that's not the person I remember. I was like, oh, we're going for this. Either she's, she's really changed or someone else is crafting her image. This episode also harkens back to the Rarity episode where she first got her boutique. And someone was taking over for her and forcing her just to be the machine in the back. Oh. I was thinking more of Princess Spike, where one person has all of 
the power and someone else is making use of it in their name. I made that connection too, especially during that one particular scene where we see him off in the background talking to Pinkie Pie. He's like, I want those apples peeled and cawed. <laughs> That's when it really struck me like, oh yeah, this also is uh, a lot of Princess Spike. Yes, except that Spike had good intentions and got carried away, and Spingallop is just a jerk. Quite. So, any nitpicks or particular things you want to point out? The way Rara transitions back and forth in the way she talks, because she's putting on the image when she's going around doing hoopsies, hoopsies, and her voice is totally different than the way she talks with AJ or with the school ponies. So she's very aware that it's just an image, but she's bought into it so much that she wears that mask most of the time. Mm, good point. Also, what happened to the backup dancer ponies? I mean, okay, so Spingallop wasn't there to trigger all of the effects, but everyone no knows the choreo. So where did they go? Were they all jerks too and left with Spingallop? Or were they actually nice guys? Or did Rara let them go and these guys are now out of a job because they no longer fit her image? I'm thinking it's more along the lines of they were hired by Spingala. And he said they were all fired and they left? Likely, but was not made clear, so bringing it up. Also, where did she get that orchestra band? Also, nice silhouette of Octavia there. <laughs> well, doesn't that answer it? Because we've seen Octavia play with an orchestra before at an event. So, oh, gee, we got rid of everything, so we'll just use everything local. Though, the way the curtain thing was lowering at the end the shadow was still there i'm like um is the backstage itself lowering or because <laughs> the shadows would stay right there and the curtain would move so in this case the shadows moved along with the curtain because probably artistically it looked better probably or it was just easier to move that entire flash object by itself mm -hmm. the lesson was good uh, one of the lessons was be true to yourself another lesson is help your friends find themselves I think mm -hmm. this was also a good AJ episode because, you know, AJ was helping someone else. It wasn't her kind of like poor Spike. She wasn't the problem. She wasn't the cause of the problem. It wasn't her stubbornness. It was her using her honesty to help someone else. Her honesty and her stubbornness, because even though Ra Ra kept brushing her off regarding Spingala, AJ kept pursuing. So that was the honesty and the stubbornness working together. I do have to wonder, the first song that Countess Kalajitura, dang it, I'm just, no, I'm not going to give in. Countess Kalajitura <laughs> sang was very bubblegum, as in not having a lot of meaning. So I'm wondering if she actually composed it or if it was part of Svengalup's image for her. Because both the song that she sung at camp when she was a filly and the song she sang at the end were a lot more in-depth. Not that there's anything wrong with bubblegum music, but it's a very wide difference. Mm -hmm. And I like how ponies do auto-tune a magical spell on the voice box. <laughs> so it's good to have a unicorn as part of your pop band. <laughs> and once again, how do ponies play the piano? Do you really want to question all of that? Because, let's see, how do ponies play the piano? How do ponies open doors? How do ponies hold a cup of tea? Uh, and never mind that we've seen a dragon play the piano. I'm talking in real life. <laughs> I'm laughing because I just remembered, yes. Yes, yes, I was talking about chance. <laughs> Who was quite awesome, and I love I love that particular thing that happened at Furicon. That was awesome. Ah, and now moving on. <laughs> Actually, going back, because it's been a long time since I read them, and apparently even though I passed them on to Lux forever ago, he hasn't read them yet. There was a tie-back to the books, specifically Pinkie Pie's Rockapalooza book or whatever it was called, because they made reference to Rockapalooza, which was in one of the books. Yeah, um, the title of the book was actually Pinkie Pie, I think, and something the Rockapalooza. That kind of looked, but I forgot. <laughs> of course. 
And also, even though there was no romantic relationship between Svengalup and Rara, even though I'm sure it's been shipped, um, what kept coming to mind also was a song, I think it was by the Human League, um, Don't You Want Me? Because he made that reference of how he found her and created that image, hmm. which brought back the opening lines of, you were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met you. You were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met you. You know, so he came into her life and turned her around and changed and created this image. So there's this whole I made you thing, which is a theme of that song. Even though the next verse, the woman gets to make a comeback in the next line, it still felt like there were some parallels to that. Well, I think it was also like a general theme they have a tendency to use for pop stars and stuff like that in cartoons. Because I remember like, this particular theme with the manager being the person who made them and then being a jerk about it and then being fired. It's kind of like a general theme. I'm pretty sure I've seen it before in, in a couple other cartoons. It is a fairly common theme. Apparently the only time you get to have a nice manager is the original Gem of the Holograms because Jerrica is the manager. The rest of the time apparently your manager has to be a jerk. So any more thoughts? That that was a nice surprise at the end where Ra Ra called the Cutie Mark Crusaders on stage. And, you know, they were obviously in on it. And then they pulled AJ on stage. And Sweetie Belle levitated that triangle for AJ to hit just like when her and Ra Ra first performed that song. And that actually reminded me of like, oh, the contest. Sweetie Belle's going to win this one. <laughs> You know, when that uh, contest was mentioned in there, I was like, yeah, Sweetie Belle's definitely going to win this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except that you can't really separate the Cutie Mark Crusaders, so we had to have all three of them come up on the stage. So, uh, final thoughts? Enjoyable episode. Predictable, but not in that, oh my god, I know exactly where this is going sort of way. More of a, oh, it's probably going to go like this. Yeah, it mostly went like that, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. This is one of those few episodes where, it, even though it was predictable, I still enjoyed it because the theme was good, the characters were good, the acting was good, the songs were nice. All of it rolled up into what I call an okay MLP episode. You know, basically it's like saying Avatar The Last Airbender had an okay episode. <laughs> Which is saying it's better than most children's shows on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than a few adult shows on TV. Uh. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get into that another time. Uh, well, I overall liked the episode from beginning to end. It was very nice. And the music was good. Definitely enjoyable. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 24, The Main Attraction. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions. And also has a Patreon. All links in the description.